Hi, my name's Jonathan Pickup. I've been teaching Vectorworks for a long time, and this is my most popular movie on my YouTube channel. But somebody asked a question about it, whether you can take a model like this and convert this model into a floor plan. Now, there is a command that will do it, but I need to build the model in a different way. Let me explain. I'm going to get it back to Vectorworks. So let's build that model again, but I can't shell the inside of it if I want to use the model for a floor plan. So let's have a look, see how it goes. I'm going to start with a rectangle. I have some sizes that I want to use, so I want to use a building which is 8 meters wide, 15 meters long. Enter, and it's 8309 high. Now that's really just a function of the roof that I want to give it. So here's the roof that I'd like here. I'm going to use my line tool. So let's grab the line tool, find the midpoint up here, draw a line at 30 degrees, touch that edge, and then I can just pull that away. Let's do that again. So touch that point, come down at 30 degrees, click, and pull that away. And the important thing is starting at the top edge, finishing at the left edge here, starting at the top edge and finishing at the right edge here. Otherwise, you don't get this opportunity to do that quick pulling away that I just did. Now, the next part I want to do down here, I can use my polygon tool. Now, I really want this face to highlight. I'm using here the auto plane. This is the automatic working plane, and it automatically detects the planes that you're working in. So let's click here. I'm going to come along six meters down to that point there. I want to go up three meters. I want to go up vertically three meters. So 3M up. And the reason for that is I want another roof here, 15 degrees, but I want to touch this midpoint here and make sure that I'm 30 degrees and following that midpoint down at 30 degrees, finish at that point. Now, I did play with this a couple of times. I had about three or four goes at this. I found if I started at this corner, it was the best. And this is six meters in that direction as well. So it's given me a solid object. You can see here there's no underneath to it. I haven't shelled it. I know I've got a three meter downstairs, that's 10 feet. I've got a three meter upstairs, that's another 10 feet. And I've also set my layers up. So let's have a look at my layers. So if we have a look at my layers here, the elevation is here zero, that's good. But the wall height is three meters. The next elevation, so floor two is three meters above and the wall height is three meters. So it's 10 feet, 10 feet. So the really important thing here is to make sure that your model is bisected by these layers. Now the layers don't need to be turned on. Now this upstairs here, now I've actually drawn this with a, with a peak on it. Uh, if I get rid of the peak when I do the floor plan, you won't see any walls in here. But with the peak on the model here, it will interpret this as slightly above three meters. And so it will create a floor plan, which I'll have to remove. So let's have a look. So we have to select this object here. Now, the final thing before we get started, I've already created a wall style in here. So when I go model to floor plan, I can choose my wall style. So I've created a wall style. And if you've got multiple wall styles, this is where you can select them. The next thing to look out for is we want to make sure that these two are selected. If you don't select both of those, it will not look or it will not create the floor plan in the layer you don't select. Normally, Vectorworks will create the gross area polylines. I don't need that. I don't need the stacking diagram. My walls are inside, and I've got my new wall style, my 250 wall or 10 inch thick wall. So click OK, and now let's have a look. So the first floor, there it is there, and you can see it's got my, my 10 inch thick walls. Now, I did tell you that the upstairs would create this because it's got this idea of uh, cutting through that roof peak. So I don't need that wall. So I do need to select these walls individually like that. Get rid of those. These two can join together. The Control J or Command J is a quick keyboard shortcut for that. And so now I've got the plan that I wanted. If I turn these two on, you can see there's my plan. And I can now create a roof for this one and a roof for the upstairs as well. Vectorworks doesn't create the roof, even if you create the 3D model of the roof. So let's select all of that information. We'll delete all of those and we'll do all this all over again. And this time I'm going to create the roof. Now, the reason I want to recreate the roof is I did have a question from somebody about how I create the roofs so quickly. Um, they're going to be 3D models. They're not going to be true Vectorworks roofs. You could, if you want, create Vectorworks roofs for this. You just draw a polygon for that shape. 
but I want to do the 3D model roof. Now the tool that I use is this one here, the extract tool. I'm going to extract a surface. I'm not going to create planar objects. So that one and that one, enter, makes them into a group. Now because they're a group, I can get inside the group. This one here, group, uh, edit group. That's the one I'm looking for. I usually use the keyboard shortcut, so sometimes I can't remember where these commands are. So there we are there. So what I've got is I've got two NURB surfaces selected. They're still selected because that's the way it started. Let's add those together. They're now one solid addition. And now I can shell those together. Using the shell solid tool, select the first face, the second face, return. And I don't want it inside, I want it outside. And now I can have a little bit of fun. Now I don't want to see stuff outside the group, so I'm just going to hide it. It's going to make it easier for me. I want to use my push-pull tool. So then click on that. This is for 50, 16 inches. This one here as well, 16 inches or 450 millimeters. And I want to pull this face out as well, 450 out that way. And the other face as well, I'll pull that out, 450. When I exit the group, you can see my roof sitting on top. And I'll just ungroup that now because it's one complete object. So do that again on this face down here or this roof down here. It's the extract tool again. One of my favorites, really. Uh, so select that face, shift key that face, enter into the group. They're still selected. Right click, add solid so they join together. Shell solid, select both faces, enter, not inside but outside. And we're going to go back to my push pull tool. It's this face here. I want to bring that out by 450 millimeters, 16 inches. This one here as well. You can see it highlights so you know which one you're selecting. And this face as well. And this face as well, 450. Now it should be the correct face. If I turn on my group, you can see there's my group behind. I don't need to offset the back edge. And let's ungroup that as well. So now I've got a solid addition, a solid addition, a solid addition there. Let's select everything. And we'll go back to AEC. Space planning, model to floor plan. And we're going to do floor one, floor two. No inside 250 wall. OK. So let's have a look at this. Now, because I put the roof on, we'll see there's something strange going on here where it's got the edges of the roof selected as well. So I need to get rid of those. So what I need to do next is go back to my selection tool, start selecting these walls and delete. Then I can join those two together. Control J or Command J. And let's have a look. So let's turn that one on, that one. And it looks fine. So there we are. But you'll notice it didn't put the roof on for me. And leaving the roof on does create that extra work on the top floor. But you do have to get rid of it. But on a multi-story building, this works really well. What I like to do now is do this all over again. So I can get rid of that. Let's get rid of all of this information as well. Let's have go back to my design layer down the bottom here. And what we're going to do now, we know that the roofs are going to cause us trouble. We can leave those if you like. But I'm going to shell the entire building. There we are. So I've shelled the entire building. Now let's see what happens. Now I know that roof causes some issues, but I guess we're just going to have to leave it at the moment. Let's do the floor plan again. So what do we got? AEC, space planning, model to floor plan. Now make sure that you select everything first. So select all. We can deselect that roof and deselect that roof. So it's just that shell that we're looking at at the moment. AEC, space planning, model to floor plan, those two layers. Notice the layers change between when I had selected different objects. We want this to be inside the 250 wall. So it's the same thickness as the shell. Let's see what we get. So here, you'll notice that Vectorworks has tried to put two walls either side of my shell. So the idea is do not shell the solid first, leave it as a solid object, and then 
you'll have the walls. So you don't have to worry about all the walls once you've done it that way. And the upstairs you'll see I've got a very odd situation here with the double walls um, based on the roof or based on the overhang of that roof. But I've really just got too many walls. I don't need these walls on the inside as well. They're on the inside of that 250 thick wall. So I need to do quite a lot of cleaning up. So let's go back to this. What are the easy things? Number one, make sure you've modeled this the correct height. Number two, make sure you've structured your layers so that they have the correct heights for the model and for your design. Number three, if you don't need to have the roofs, don't put them on. But you can also deselect them when it comes time to creating the model to floor plan. So I hope you enjoyed that movie. If you'd like to attend workshops with me online, become a member and get the chance of attending up to five workshops every month. Thanks for watching.